Hello, this is entry 10 of Bill Atkins Life. And we have great stories today because Bill is going to pleasure us with stories about his grandparents and his parents. Go ahead, Bill. Well, I guess I should start out with my father. Uh, my father was 10 years old when his dad died. His dad had been out there in the fields and uh, he was a farmer. He was a share farmer. And uh, what I mean by that is, is that he didn't own the land. He just <laughs> rented it. And uh, he came in and had lunch. I, th I think it was a Sunday, I'm not sure. But um, he said, gee, I don't feel very good. So he went into the parlor <laughs> and laid down on the couch. And uh, that was his last moment. And uh, my dad, like I say, was about 10 years old. And um, that was a big, big blow for him because uh, he had hoped to do things with his dad. And uh, so after the funeral, his great uncle, Uncle Charles Adkins, who was a well-known, successful farmer in the area around Monticello, Illinois, he said, well, we're going to have to sell everything they have on the farm. And um, I, should, I should have brought the picture, but anyway, um, there was an advertisement made and uh, stuck around town showing people that there was going to be a sale on the Adkins farm. <clears throat> and uh, for the sale was a uh, a wagon and uh, a horse and uh, some straw and uh, other implements for the farm. And it was kind of interesting. And uh, I have a copy of that. My wife, Rita, framed it. And I have it in my kitchen area uh, to show myself and other people what was sold on my grandpa's farm. And uh, life went on. Um, I don't know how uh, my grandma uh, collected money, um, how she made a living. I don't know any, any of that. My, my dad never shared that with me. And uh, suddenly he was 17 years old, and uh, a friend of his and he were talking. They had just graduated from high school, and uh, they both longed to go to Montana. So they said, well, you know, my dad told my, his mother uh, that he was going to go to Montana with his buddy. And um, so off they went. They hitchhiked all the way out there and uh, got a job on a farm. And they loved it there. And they worked, I don't know what, one or two years. And then all of a sudden, World War I came. And uh, being devout Americans, they both decided, let's join the, the Army. So they hitchhiked back to Monticello, Illinois, and went to the recruiting station there and enlisted in the Army. And um, this was well after the war started, though. They, they didn't make a decision right away. But uh, there was plenty of news around saying that they needed volunteers to enlist in the Army. So that's when my dad and his friend decided to do that. 
So, um, I think my dad, I know he was stationed at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And uh, I think that's where he got his basic training. And he was in the mobile artillery. He, he uh, drove a motorcycle. And uh, they were transferred to the East Coast. Um, I can't remember where it was, but it was a major departure point for uh, ships and so on. And uh, suddenly the war was over. And uh, my dad was very upset because he had hoped to go to France or Germany or England uh, to um, at least see the places. And so uh, he got his discharge and he came back home. And he started working in lumberyards and he got a job as manager of a lumberyard. And uh, he was pretty successful doing that. And he met my mother. And um, she was a sharp woman. She had a educa good education. She was on the honor roll in high school. Um, I think she competed for number one position in high school, so um, my dad was impressed with her. And uh, she was dating a guy, and uh, my dad uh, made a point of going to see the guy. And he said, uh, by the way, you've been um, dating Beatrice Bushert. Yes. He says, well, you've gone on your last date. He said, uh, don't even think about going with her on another date or you won't be happy with the results. And um, the, the guy, the guy never, <laughs> never asked my mother for a date. And uh, they were married and I think they were married in Weldon, Illinois. And uh, I have a copy of their marriage license. And uh, someplace. <laughs> and uh, they started life together. But and your I, mother did, never had any in-laws. So did you tell me? Did I not understand about your dad's mother? Um, I don't know anything about my grandmother. My, my dad's mother. I don't know how many brothers or sisters she had, nothing. No, I don't know where she came from, but her name was, um, I can't think of it, her maiden name. Oh, my mother's maiden name was Bushert, but uh, I was thinking of my dad's mother. Right. And uh, I don't know what her maiden name was. I'm sure that I can go to... Um, uh, familyhistory.com or something like that and, and get the end. I'm sure it's recorded. But um, but she had passed too. So you're... Oh, she, you're was long, she was long gone. Okay. So tell me about your mother's parents. Okay. Beatrice Pushert. Um, now isn't that something all of a sudden I can't remember her dad's name. But anyway, they lived in Lovington, Illinois. And, but she was born in the hospital in a nearby town. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't think of it, but uh, I do know it. In Illinois. In Illinois. Yeah. And, and uh, so she, they brought her home to Lovington. And uh, it was a very common home. Uh, there was a... A, a decent sized uh, outhouse in the back and a barn. And uh, I think that's where they kept the horse. And uh, they had a well and uh, lots of candles. And uh, mother grew up there. And when she was eight years old, her dad died. 
and I don't know under what circumstances he died. But, um, so her mother basically raised her. And how she made money, I, again, I do not know. And, uh, but my mother was very, very sharp in school. And uh, it was nice that she had some, a couple of girls to compete against to get straight A's and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I don't think she knew what a B was, <laughs> but um, she uh, graduated and she was very interested in teaching. And uh, uh, some farmers heard about her and they got together, they were three farmers, and they came to her and they said, Beatrice, we're looking for a teacher for a, a country school very small, but uh, we're willing to pay, I don't know, 21 bucks a week or a month or something. And um, she said, oh, I'd love to do that. And uh, she had no training, nothing whatsoever. But uh, she got help from people and um, she uh, read the books so that she knew exactly what she was gonna be teaching. And she started in. And he, she had a very successful first year. And um, about that time, she was dating my dad. And uh, one thing led to another. They got married and uh, started their own life together. And um, I think she was doing some teaching uh, because in the country they didn't have any requirements for a degree in education. So um, she was able to get a job and uh, this went on for quite a while and um, Eventually, my older brother was born in 1929, and uh, my dad's mother died just after my brother was born. And uh, so he had no family at all, except his sister. And um, they started life out I can't remember exactly the town they lived in, but I know that they eventually lived in Oak Park, Illinois. And um, my twin brother and I were born, and uh, Sam had a mastoid problem. <clears throat> a mastoid is evidently something behind the ear, in the ear. And my mother turned on the oven and kept the temperature of the oven warm so that it healed his mastoid. I don't know the details, but uh, I know that what the sacrifice she made for time to take care of him. And uh, we were not for, uh, identical twins. We were fraternal twins. And um, I didn't think that we looked alike at all. <laughs> But people would come to the house and say, now, which one are you? <laughs> but uh, as we grew, we um, started going to school. And I think I told a story of about um, the fact that we were in preschool. Yes. And uh, that was the rhubarb story. Told some rhubarb. Mm hmm. But uh, anyway, um, we started school. And um, we moved, I guess that was it. Then we moved to Oak Park, Illinois, and my mother decided she wanted to teach. And she went to a person, they said, you have to get approval from him. So she went to this guy and, and he said, yes, you have very good credentials. And he said, uh, you can certainly teach here. And he said, uh, just give me a hundred dollars and 
I'll give you the license. Well, of course, that was like asking him, asking her for a million dollars. And uh, she was very, very upset because of that. But that was the way life was. You, certain guys were crooks and uh, they took advantage of it. So um, she, couldn't, she couldn't do anything about that. So she told dad, I want to go back to college. And she went to Normal, Illinois, Bloomington Normal, and went to Illinois Normal State College. And she got a two-year, She after two years, she got her degree. And uh, then she came back, they moved back to Illinois, and uh, she got a job teaching without the crook. And... Um, my dad was always a salesman or handling lumber. And um, so he never had any, what you would say was a real good job. Another problem was he quit high school before he graduated. That was another mistake he made. And he never tried to make up for that to get a high school diploma. And um, They, of course, were raising my twin brother and I. And I remember a story my mother told me. Um, my Sam and I were old enough to walk. And uh, we, mother would leave us in the front yard to sit down and play. And one day we heard a train whistle. And uh, we were curious about it. And um, we got up and started walking down the street toward the train. And mother was busy inside the house and all of a sudden she came out. Boys, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? No boys. And uh, a couple of college kids or high school kids, I don't know which way they were, they were coming by and she said, could you help me please? What's wrong, ma'am? My boys are missing, they're twins, Bill and Sam. And uh, I'm afraid they went to the, they heard the, I'm sure they heard the railroad uh, train and I'm sure they're curious, they were attracted to that direction. And the boys took off running and uh, they caught me as I was crossing the railroad track. And they caught Sam before he got to the railroad track. And um, train went by and uh, they brought us back home. Mother was just so relieved. And um, she told that story many times to people. And, and um, I, can, I can see today, of course, having raised children um, that was a real, real problem to watch your children and, ha and do work in the house. And uh, um, mother and dad had a dog. And I think its name was Frisky. And uh, the dog sat with Sam and I on the grass. And if someone came by and, and started to walk over to uh, Sam and I, the dog would growl to warn them, don't you dare touch these two boys. Well, unfortunately, the dog was not taught to keep us sitting. <laughs> and, um, but uh, still, that was a part of our growing up years. And... Uh, so how does your grandmother, your mother's mother, fit into this? Well, Grandma always lived in the same house in Lovington, Illinois. And we used to come down to Monticello, where my dad was born, and his, his sister and her husband were living in Monticello on a little, I call it a farmette. I think it was about 10 acres. 
And my two cousins, they were 10 years, one of them was 10 years older than me. They were growing up there too. And um, I loved to go to Aunt Nellie and Uncle Ernest's farm. And of course, when we would come down there, we would go to um, my mother's mother, the, uh, Edna Busher, um, and go to her house in Lovington, Illinois. I don't know how far they were, maybe 25 miles. And um, like I say, it was a very plain house and, uh, but it was adequate, and uh, she raised her son, Eber, and uh, daughter, uh, Beatrice, and uh, that's where they grew up. And Eber married a gal, and he had a job there in Lovington, and he worked there for many years. Uh, he didn't leave there until, I don't know, he was probably in his 40s or 50s and a well-respected man. The only problem is he never visited his mother. Very rarely would he come over and visit her. And mother used to get so mad because she would say to him, you live here. All you have to do is come down four blocks and you're there in your mother's house. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm busy, you know. Okay. So, mother and dad would bring the three, or us, the three of us in the car to grandma's house. And of course, uh, unbeknownst to us, mother bought groceries and everything else for the house when, she, when they came. So she stocked the larder, as we call it and uh, made sure that mother, grandma, had plenty of food because she had no income at all. And I don't recall Social Security had started at that time. And, um, and that was it. Um, it was a simple life for my brothers and I, but we really looked forward to coming down to Monticello and Lovington, Illinois to see our aunt and uncle, and our grandma. So and she was our only grandma. You have something of your grandma's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Would you show us? Well, grandma was, her maiden name 